Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight where we get you the day's top stories from India and across the world. I'm Tracy Shilji and here are the headlines. Pakistan violates ceasefire again along the line of control in Noshera and Arispura sectors. BJP leader Yashwan Sinha leads a delegation to meet Hurriyat leader Gilani to reduce tensions in the valley. Ratan Tata meets Tata Group CEOs, tells them not to be concerned about the leadership change in the company. Markets react with a shock though to Cyrus Mystery's ouster fall by up to 3%. Mulayam Singh Yadav insists his family and party are united, says there's no opposition to son Akhilesh Yadav continuing as Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister. And 61 police cadets are shot dead, 118 people injured in a terror attack on a training academy in Quetta in Pakistan. All terrorists are killed after a five-hour-long operation. First to Kashmir, where for the fifth consecutive day, Pakistani troops resorted to heavy shelling along the line of control in Noshera and Arispura sectors. There were no reports of any loss of life on the Indian side as firing from both the sides continues. Meanwhile, a delegation led by BJP leader Yashwan Sinha has met hardline Hurid leaders in a fresh bid at breaking the logjam after more than three months of deadly unrest and shutdown in the valley. In yet another incident of ceasefire violation, Pakistani forces resorted to heavy firing along the line of control in Nausera sector of Rajauri district on Tuesday. Pakistani troops used mortars and small arms fire to target Indian positions and even civilians. The Indian Army gave a befitting response to the ceasefire violation. No injury or damage has been reported so far from the Indian side. Earlier, Pakistani troops also resorted to ceasefire violations by targeting the civilian population in Arispura sector in Jammu district. Six people of a family were injured in the attack. Meanwhile, the unprecedented increase in Pakistani shelling along the border has created panic among the residents. अभी कुछ दिन पहले से जो है बॉर्डर और लूसी में टेंशन काफी ज्यादा चल रही है जहां जहां कुछ विलेजेस हैं वहां पर डिप्टी कमिश्नर साहब ने जो है स्कूल्स वहां बंद करने के भी आदेश दिए गए हैं बल्कि अगर वहां पर देखते हैं कि इंटेंसिटी फायर की कितनी है अकॉर्डिंगली अगर हमें जरूरत पड़ती है तो हम वहां से इनको इवैक्यूएट करके तो यहां पर जो सेफ कैंप एरियाज हैं वो हमने आइडेंटिफाई किए वहां पर उनको बिठाएंगे हमारा बहुत नुकसान होता है कि हम बाहर भी निकल कर नहीं पढ़ाई कर सकते क्योंकि कभी फायर हो सकता है यहां पर बाप भी घबराए हुए सर बच्चे भी घबराए हुए लेकिन चक्कर यह है कि बेचते नहीं है अभी घर से बोलते हैं कोई पता नहीं कि किसी टाइम भी फायर आ सकता है फायर आने का इधर हमारे न्याका पांच घर में कोई भरोसा नहीं है कभी भी आ सकता है सर in an attempt to break the three month impasse in Kashmir, a five member delegation led by BJP leader Yashwan Sinha met hardline Hurriyat leaders Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani and Mir Rez Omar Farooq in Hyderpura area of Srinagar on Tuesday. The meeting came as the separatist shutdown in Kashmir entered its 109th day. However, Sinha clarified that they had not come as a delegation. I want to clear one thing. We are not a delegation. हम चंद लोग जिनको मैं कहूंगा कि पीपल ऑफ गुडविल हैं वो वो इंसानियत के नाते आए हैं यहां पर और मकसद है कि यहां जो दुख दर्द है जो तकलीफ है उसको अगर हम बांट सकें तो अपने को खुशकिस्मत समझेंगे। Meanwhile, Pakistani-based terror group Lashkar-e Taiba has claimed responsibility for the Uri terror attack through a poster. The militant group's parent body, Jamaat Dawa, will also hold funeral prayers for one of the perpetrators of the attack in Pakistan's Gujranwala town. The attack in September had claimed the lives of 20 Indian soldiers. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. The Tata Group's Cyrus Mystery boardroom battle entered the courtroom today with the Tatas filing caveats to prevent the ousted Tata Sons chairman from getting an ex-party order against his sacking. Caveats are filed by a party to make sure that they are heard before a court decides on any petition related to that matter. Meanwhile, reports claim that Mystery also filed caveats with the company Law Tribunal. Here's a report.
A day after sacking Cyrus Mistry as its chairman, the Tata Group filed multiple caveats in courts and other forums to prevent Mistry from getting ex parte order against his sacking. Trying to allay fears of protracted legal battles, interim chairperson Ratan Tata also asked group companies to focus on their businesses and not get distracted by the change in leadership. He told managing directors and senior leaders of Tata companies to focus on their market position vis-a-vis -vis competition and not compare themselves to their own past. He further stressed that the drive must be on leadership rather than to follow. Tata said he assumed the role of interim chairperson for stability and continuity so that there is no vacuum. Tata Sons has already constituted a five-member panel, which includes Ratan Tata, to find a new chairman within four months. The dramatic turn of events at India's largest conglomerate shook the stock markets. The company's shares took a nosedive, with market analysts left speculating the reasons that caused them. The manner in which uh, this has happened and the abruptness of this entire move uh, has shaken the entire industry, has shaken the stock markets and all uh, analysts are wondering as to what could be the real reason behind uh, such an abrupt move. Everybody has a huge faith in the leadership qualities of Ratan Tata and I'm sure that uh, the temporary uncertainty that has been created in Bombay House will be blown over at the earliest and it will be in the interest of India Inc. as well as in the interest of Tata's and India that the uncertainty should be blown over at the earliest. Mystery's removal comes in the wake of Tata Steel struggling to offload its loss-making British assets and Tata Motor is struggling with weak sales. Mystery's incapability in resolving the long-running dispute with Japanese firm NTT Docomo that cost the company $1.2 billion in damages is also being seen as a reason behind his sacking. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, a day after the open squabble between Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav and State Party President Shivpal Yadav, Samajwadi Party Chief Malayan Singh Yadav today held a press conference in Lucknow. While asserting that the family and the party is united, Malayam said that a decision on the chief ministerial candidate will be taken only after the party wins the state elections. This was the first time that Malayam seemed unclear about naming Akhilesh as the CM candidate, suggesting that the so-called truce was just temporary. It was neither a picture of unity nor did his statements carry too much conviction. But the national president of the Samajwadi party insisted on Tuesday that his party and family were united. Notably, while Chief Minister Akhilesh Yadav was absent at the press conference, Mulayam chose to emphasize that the SP came to power in 2012 because of him alone. But he ruled out becoming the Chief Minister just a few months away from the Assembly elections. <laughs> ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं हुआ जिसके नाते ये कहा जाए की समाजवादी आंदोलन और विचारधारा को कोई नुकसान पहुँचा है समाजवादी विचारधारा आंदोलन और नेतृत्व यथावत है मजबूत है और पूरी ताकत के साथ सांप्रदायिक ताकतों को ध्वस्त करने में सक्षम है While remaining evasive about his brother Shivpal's return to the cabinet, Mulayam once again defended party MP Amar Singh, who was blamed by the Akhilesh faction for the problems within the family. The developments once again prompted political rivals to call the SP a sinking ship. Over the past few months, I think there is no sense of governance that exists in, governor, in, in the state of UP. Akhilesh Yadav and Mr. Mulayam Singh Yadav must immediately put, put an end to this drama.
and if they do not have the capacity to really control this uh, ever raging infighting they must quit it's now that the daggers are drawn between the two fractions on this side is the chief minister and ram gopal ji and on the other side is the party chief along with shivpal uh, yadav so naturally this kind of a test of each person's weightage is on and ram gopal believes that he is a very popular leader of uttar pradesh i think what he says there is some substance in that samajwadi party mein jo bhi kuch ho raha hai wo bahut afsosnak hai hum sirf yahi kahenge ki unka family ka matter hai us par zyada bolne ke bajaye हमारा सिर्फ इतना मशवरा है कि समाजवादी पार्टी की सरकार है और इस वक्त लोग जो हैं त्रस्त हैं मुख्तलिफ चीज़ों के लिए वाइल मुलायम वॉज डिसमिसिव अबाउट हिज ब्रदर राम गोपाल यादव द लैटर वॉज क्लियर अबाउट वेयर द प्रॉब्लम ले इन द प्रेजेंट क्राइसिस दैट्सिंग द पार्टी अपार्ट जहाँ अखिलेश नहीं वहाँ समाजवादी माइनस अखिलेश देर इज नो समाजवादी पार्टी Indicating the rough road ahead for the SP in the assembly elections, Mulayam Singh refused to name the chief ministerial candidate of the party. All he could say was the party will decide if it did get a majority. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to more national news, and the Central Advisory Board of Education today decided that no child will be failed till the st- uh, till class five. Thereafter, state government can take a call on whether they want to hold back students. The CAB also proposed that learning outcomes can be codified under the Right to Education Act rules. Apart from Union Education Minister Prakash Javadekar, education ministers of several states were also present at the meeting. Speaking after the meeting, Javadekar said that many states expressed concern over learning outcomes due to the no detention policy. He said that learning outcomes for every class will be defined. पहली, दूसरी, तीसरी, चौथी हर वर्ष में क्या-क्या छात्र को आना चाहिए ये लर्निंग आउटकम्स हम डिफाइन करेंगे आज तक नहीं थे और ये लर्निंग लर्निंग आउटकम्स डिफाइन करके हम राइट टू एजुकेशन शिक्षा के मौलिक अधिकार के नियमों में डालेंगे शिक्षा के मौलिक अधिकार में पांचवी और आठवीं की परीक्षा रखने के लिए यानी शुरू करने के लिए आवश्यक कानूनी सुधार किया जाए अमेंडमेंट की जाए और उस संशोधन से ये अधिकार करना या नहीं करना इसका अधिकार राज्यों को दिया जाए द कांग्रेस टुडे वंस अगेन अटैक द मोदी गवर्नमेंट ऑन द इशू ऑफ ओएनजीसी टेकिंग ओवर द जीएसपीसी द मेन ऑपोजिशन पार्टी क्लेम दैट दिस वाज बीइंग डन टू कवर अप द जीएसपीसी ग्लास गैस ब्लॉक स्कैम इन व्हिच इट हैड टेकन अ लोन ऑफ 20000 करोड़ रुपीस एक गैस ब्लॉक है जीएसपीसी का उसका मूल्य है 3000 करोड़ पर जीएसपीसी ने बीस हजार करोड़ रुपए का लोन लिया है बैंकों से तो ओएनडीसी को क्या मिलता है इससे ओएनडीसी को एक तीन हजार करोड़ रुपए का भंडार मिलता है पर उसके अलावा बीस हजार करोड़ की सिरदर्दी भी आती है क्या ये इंसाफ है क्या ये सही नीति है क्या ये महारत्न को और मजबूत करने का यही रास्ता है मोदी सरकार के पास एन एक्सप्लोजन इन ओल्ड डेलीज नया बाजार किल्ड वन पर्सन इंक्लूडिंग एन इंजर्ड इनफैक्ट टू अदर्स हैड सेट ऑफ पैनिक अमंग द पीपल इन द वेक ऑफ हाई अलर्ट इन द नेशनल कैपिटल इवन एज पुलिस रूल्ड आउट एनी टेरर एंगल इन इट द कॉज ऑफ द एक्सप्लोजन इज येट बी अर्टन But according to unconfirmed reports, a person carrying a jute bag was killed immediately as the bag exploded. However, other reports say that the explosion was by Diwali crackers. Forensic teams and officers from the special cell of the Delhi Police reached the spot to collect samples. And uh, Home Minister Rajnath Singh, who is in Bahrain at the moment, spoke to Delhi Police Commissioner Alok Verma and took stock of the situation. He also sought a report from the Delhi Police on the incident. जांच कर रहे हैं आ, सारा फोरेंसिक एक्सपर्ट एफ की टीम आ रही है और जैसे ही इसमें जो है वो हमें कोई कंफर्मेशन मिलेगी कि किस किस्म का किस इंटेंसिटी का एक्सप्लोसिव है तो उसी हिसाब से हम जांच कर रहे हैं Prime Minister Narendra Modi inaugurated the first tribal carnival in the national capital today to promote a sense of inclusiveness among tribals. Modi lauded the rich contribution of tribals at the congregation 
He also said that people from tribal communities have saved the forests of India. While sharing his experience of working in tribal-dominated areas, he also said that about 1,600 tribal artists and around 8,000 tribal delegates are participating uh, from across the country in this carnival. It is aimed at preserving and promoting various facets of tribal life for overall holistic development of the scheduled tribes. Apni boli, apni parampara, apni उसमे भी समय अनुकूल नए रंग भरते जाना लेकिन अपने पन को खोने नहीं देना ऐसी कला शायद ही कोई पाप बता सकता है विद अ क्विक ब्रेक विल बी बैक विद इंटरनेशनल न्यूज़ इन अ बिट स्टे विद अस Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. Now, New Zealand is all set to offer an olive branch to India on the issue of NSG membership. It was one of the countries that opposed India's application, citing principles as mentioned by China and other countries. However, resolving the differences could be one of the key focus of New Zealand Prime Minister John Key's talks with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday. The New Zealand Prime Minister arrived in Delhi for his state visit today. New Zealand Prime Minister John Key reached Delhi on Tuesday evening. He is expected to have meetings with Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Wednesday. India's bid for the membership to the Nuclear Suppliers Group will be a key item on the agenda. Considering this is an important issue, uh, New Zealand is a member of the 48-member grouping, and the NSG issue was also raised with our other partners as well. I would imagine that it would be raised. New Zealand has been demanding that India should sign the free trade agreement that could help stabilize its economy by export of goods and services to India. New Zealand is interested in exporting its agricultural products to India. India on the other hand has expressed interest in the expertise in technology including the aviation industry. To India, political convergence on issues like NSG is more important than mere trade. It will be interesting to see that whether in the meeting of both the prime minister any give and take takes place given the fact that New Zealand was seen with Pakistan during the last NSG meeting. Akhile Soman for Rajasabha Television with camera person Chetan in Delhi. Now to Pakistan, where at least 61 police cadets were killed and 117 injured in an attack on a police training academy in Quetta last night. Security forces shot dead all three militants involved in the attack. Islamic State terrorists have claimed the responsibility. A savage attack on a police training center in Quetta in the Balochistan province of Pakistan left over 60 people dead. Most of the victims were police trainees. Three terrorists wearing suicide bomb vests entered the training facility late on Monday, taking many trainees hostage. All three were killed in an operation that lasted nearly five hours. We knew that the recruits were hostage. And we didn't know how many of them were in the inside. When we picked up the communication, we knew that there were three deaths and three of them were suiciders. और वो ऑपरेट हो रहे हैं इंस्ट्रक्शंस जो उनसे कि मुतालिक बात चीत हो रही है वो अफगानिस्तान से हो रही है। इस्लामिक स्टेट टेररिस्ट क्लेम रिस्पांसिबिलिटी पोस्टिंग ऑन स्टिल इमेजेस ऑफ आर्म्ड अटैकर्स ऑन इट्स वेबसाइट। हावेवर पाकिस्तानी ऑफिशियल्स अर्लियर ब्लेम्ड अनदर सुन्नी एक्सट्रीमिस्ट दुख का मौका है, दुख का दिन है कि गुजरता रात कोयटा में एक और अलमनाक और अंधोदाक वाक्य हुआ, जिसकी वजह से कीमती जाने जाया हुई, बड़ी तादाद में शादते हुई। 
Pakistani Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif visited the injured in the hospital on Tuesday. Security was tightened in the area and an emergency declared in all government hospitals. The recent attacks in the region have raised fears of more such strikes. ये आखिर कौन सी बेरोनी ताकतें हैं जो कि हमारे मुल्क को इस तरह दीमक की तरह चाट रही हैं अब उनको बेनकाब करना हमारी हमारी हुकूमत की जिम्मेदारी है Monday night's assault was the deadliest in Pakistan since a suicide bomber killed 70 people in an attack on mourners gathered at a hospital in Quetta in August Bureau report Rajesh Sabha TV Islamic state fighters have reportedly massacred scores of people around its stronghold of Mosul in the past week the UN said that this citing preliminary information from, from sources in the area. The report signaled the terror group's increasing desperation as it is ousted village by village from its last stronghold in Iraq. Kurdish Peshmerga forces and the Iraqi army are making advances on different fronts as they push towards Mosul, facing stiff resistance from IS fighters. Several countries are involved in the battle to reclaim Mosul. A US-led coalition said that it carried out six airstrikes near Mosul on Sunday destroying 19 fighting positions and 17 vehicles, as well as rocket and mortar launchers, artillery and tunnels. Evacuation of migrants from the camps in Calais, known as the Jungle, continued on the second day on Tuesday. More than 2,300 camp dwellers, constituting more than a third of the total, left the camps to the welcome centres across France. Hundreds of migrants once again queued before dawn outside a vast hangar to register themselves for one of the 450 welcome centres where they will be given temporary housing. Minor scuffles also took place outside the registration centre but peace was restored after police intervention. France has said that it will start the demolition drive on Tuesday itself and uh, in fact authorities said that bulldozers would not roll in immediately in an effort to minimise tensions. Now for many of the migrants fleeing war and poverty, the closure of the jungle marks the end of a dream to reach Britain where most had sought to reunite with family or find work. 1918 majors have quitted Calais on board of 45 bus to rejoin 80 centres d'accueil and d'orientation situated in 11 regions of France and 400 mineurs have been oriented and they have also been put in the now, the U.S. presidential elections are just 14 days away, and as the time approaches, the two candidates are hitting out at each other with increasing force, while Republican nominee Donald Trump continues to call opinion polls phony. Democratic candidate Hillary Clinton is using the sexual assault allegations against Trump to her advantage. A defiant Donald Trump continues to blame his campaign struggles on what he calls are phony polls from a disgusting media as he fights to energize his most loyal supporters before the November 8th polls. With just 14 days until the election, the Republican nominee campaigned in Florida. On the sidelines, his team conceded publicly as well as privately that crucial Pennsylvania may be slipping away to Democrat Hillary Clinton. So I actually think we're winning, and what they do is they show these phony polls where they, you know, where they look at Democrats, and it's heavily weighted with Democrats, and then they'll put on a poll where we're not winning, and everybody says, oh, they're not winning. It's a heavily weighted poll with Democrats, like the ABC phony poll that just came out, totally phony poll. And, but the polls that mean something, the polls that where they really are, have been accurate over the years, we're leading by two nationally. So I just want to say, and watch the polls, because this is part of the crooked system. It's part of the rigged system that I've been talking about since I entered the race. If Trump loses Pennsylvania, it would leave him only a razor-thin pathway to the 270 electoral votes that he needs to win the White House. However, he's keeping his optimism intact. These crowds are incredible. And it's great to be back here in Tampa and to be... Back in my second home, Florida. I love my second home. I love Florida. In case you haven't heard, the new poll from Investors Business Daily, the most accurate poll for the last three presidential elections by far, has us up two points nationwide. We're leading, number one. In bad news for Trump, a new poll shows young voters turning to Clinton. The Democratic Party candidate now leads among likely 18 to 30-year-old voters by 60% to 19%.
young black voters are already in her corner and now young whites are moving her way. He's basically declaring defeat before the battle has even started. He's proving to the world what it means to have an unqualified commander in chief. It's not only wrong, it's dangerous, and it needs to be repudiated. Please come out and vote on November 8th here in New Hampshire and prove once and for all that love trumps hate. In swing state New Hampshire, Clinton joined the governor Maggie Hassan and Massachusetts Senator Elizabeth Warren as they tore apart the Republican candidate on the several allegations of sexual assault against him. Donald Trump disrespects, aggressively disrespects, more than half the human beings in this country. He thinks that because he has money that he can call women fat pigs and bimbos. He thinks because he is a celebrity that he can rate women's bodies from one to ten. He thinks that because he has a mouthful of Tic Tacs that he can force himself on any woman within groping distance. Well, I got news for you, Donald Trump. Women have had it with guys like you. Trump has continued to deny all the allegations against him, calling them total fiction. But the road ahead looks bleak for Trump and his campaign. The Republican National Committee ignored him altogether in mailers sent out to the New Hampshire voters. The mail focuses instead on Clinton's credibility. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. And finally, let's get you all the latest from the world of sports in Sportsbeat. India will stage the Under-17 Football World Cup from the 6th to the 28th of October next year. The sports world governing body FIFA announced on Tuesday. Kolkata became the sixth venue to host the games after Kochi, Mumbai, Guwahati, Delhi and Margao were already ratified as venues following inspections by the FIFA delegation. The draw for the event will be held on the 7th of July next year. Indian men's hockey team continue their brilliant form as they crash as they thrash China 9-0 in the Asian Champions Trophy. Just Jeet Singh, Akash Deep Singh, and Afan Yusuf uh, scored brace, while Rupinder Pal Singh, Nikin Timaya, and Lalit Upadhyay scored a goal each. With 10 points from four matches, India leads the points table of six nations. Indian wrestler Yogeshwar Dutt's chances of having his London Olympics medal upgraded from bronze to silver ended after the International Olympic Committee decided to drop an investigation into deceased Russian wrestler Besik Kurakov. The Russian allegedly tested positive for a banned steroid when an old sample was retested earlier this year. FIFA fined Spain's Football Federation for breaking rules governing the international transfer and registration of minors. Spain's federation had allowed Atletico and Real Madrid to sign underage players from other countries by breaching rules. Disciplinary committee ruled that the Spanish federation must pay 220,000 Swiss francs and have been given a further six months to regularize their existing system within the country. That's all we have for you in the news tonight. Thanks for joining us.